Hi, everyone. This is Professor Hein Nguyen, and I want to welcome you to my um, midterm number one tutorial video. So in this video, what I want to do is um, I just really want to go over um, the test format with you once again and also want to just give you a, a couple of quick points in terms of what you need to pay attention to uh, in terms of the concepts and the themes that we're going to be focusing on for midterm number one and just try to give you some advice on, on how to be successful on midterm number one, if you will. Okay, so I hope that you will watch this entire video, pay close attention, and I'm confident that if you do, everything that you have been learning um, so far in the class uh, will all make sense in a, in a way, right? So let me begin by sharing with you somewhat, um, some work. Um, so this is, um, I wanna share with you, this is a work of Adam Smith, um, who was a famous, uh, English writer, but also an economist, and he wrote somewhat his book. It's called The Wealth of Nation, and he kind of looks at somewhat the the um, economy and the trade that existed uh, um, in the transatlantic um, trade, if you will, in the um, 18th century, and to see its growth. Right, and um, in his book, um, there's a section where he talks about the uh, result of colonization. Right, he really looks at somewhat um, since the time of Christopher Columbus from 1492 all the way up to the time that he writes his book, which is around um, the 1770s, if I'm not mistaken, right? You're talking about almost 300 years here, and he wants to somewhat analyze and explain somewhat um, the changes economically that's when, what's been going on, right? You have the rise of capitalism, you have uh, colonialism spreading around the world, and in one passage, he kind of talks about colonization and he says that it's um, beneficial for some and it's been a misfortune for others, right? And that's really the theme that I want you to focus on midterm number one. Now, I can't give away the question because ultimately, um, you know, I, I do want to put you under pressure in a sense. Uh, this is a time limited test. So you do have two hours uh, to complete the test once you start um, the test, but you do have. Uh, quite a bit of time to prepare for the exam. So I think if you pay close attention to the theme that I'm trying to somewhat get you to focus on, uh, um, I think it all makes sense. And that's somewhat the parameters of midterm number one. I want you to think about what Adam Smith talks about. And I will share with you um, somewhat the, the short section, if you will, of what he talks about colonization, how it benefits some, and ultimately how it's a misfortune for others because what we have been exploring and, and learning in the past, uh, in the previous six chapters, if you will, you are ultimately looking at somewhat this rise of the transatlantic trade, right? That ultimately connect three different continents, if you will. We are talking about Europe, we are talking about Africa, and we are talking about the Americas. Um, and the people that's living on those continents and because of the transatlantic trade, if you will, it is going to facilitate goods, um, the movement of, of ideas, um, wealth, uh, but last but not least, also um, labor and people, whether voluntarily or by force, right? So you got a lot of changes going on. So that's what we've been focusing on, right? We started in chapter number one, looking at, uh, Pre-Columbus Native American society, and then chapter two, you were looking at somewhat the initial contact between Christopher Columbus and, and, and ultimately Native Americans, and then chapter three, you have the rise of other colonial powers. You have the French, you have the English, and then ultimately we focus on the English colonies, if you will, and ultimately look at its rise, right? So that's the theme of midterm number one. Right? We're looking at somewhat this interaction, this encounter, and this connection right, of, of the three continents, right? And what connects it all together? Right? I want to share with you somewhat uh, a, a, an old map, if you will, from the 16th century, right? It used to be believed that you know, the ocean was this like mystical place and full of you know, weird creatures and exotic, you know, mythical gods, if you will, in a sense, right? So I, this map, I find it very fascinating because it has kind of all that, that mystique and, and, and 
also that fear, right? This is part of the reason why Christopher Columbus gets so much credit, right? Because the average person uh, was illiterate in, you know, in the 15th century and ultimately, you know, because of their beliefs and, and the Catholic Church, um, the ocean was kind of like this mysterious, you know, strange, dark place, right? But if you look at it, right, with time, right, by the 18th century, by the time that Adam Smith is, is writing his book, if you will, I don't want you to think the, the ocean, the, tran the, the Atlantic Ocean as a barrier. If anything, the Atlantic Ocean becomes somewhat this super highway that ultimately facilitate trade, uh, it facilitate movements, right, and, 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 and labor, and also wealth and riches, right? So here you have the, the transatlantic trade, full scale, if you will. And I want you to look at somewhat the movement of goods that are flowing back and forth, right? And ultimately, this is the theme, this is the focus for midterm number one. When Adam Smith talks about beneficial for some and a misfortunes for others, he kind of states about it in the article that I share with you, but it's not the full extent. So what I want you to do is to focus on what Adam Smith kind of talks about, the results of colonization, you know, benefits, misfortune, but we're going to expand on it, right? And I want you to look at somewhat the three different continents, who benefited and who suffered, right? What misfortunes is he referring to? So you got Europe, you got Africa, and you got the Americas, right? That's what I want you to do. And that's the theme I want you to focus on because this transatlantic trade is going to shift the balance of power, right? And not to give it away, guys, I think you know who benefits here. Yes, it is the Europeans, right? It is somewhat uh, the Europeans and they're somewhat uh, uh, migrants, right? That comes over to the Americas and the misfortunes. Well, I think you can already guess from the modules that we've been working towards, of course, it's Native Americans and of course, it's Africans, right? Because they're, they're slaves, if you will. So that's what I want you to focus on, right? So with that say, I think you know the overall overarching theme that I want you to focus on, on midterm number one. So let's go through midterm number one, the format. Um, you should be familiar with the format by now because you have done the sample document question uh, exam assignment. You kind of have an idea of what the test is about, right? Um, you got documents that you're going to have to go through, primary resources that you're going to have to review, right? And then ultimately, I'm giving you the key terms, right? Um, you're not just working with a blank slate. I'm letting you know what you need to talk about, right? So it's your job to utilize the documents, to utilize all of the key terms, and put it all together and to answer the question. Now, even though right now you don't know the question, right? I think if you're watching this video, you know what I'm heading towards, right? Adam Smith, colonization, results, beneficial for who? misfortunes for, for, uh, for some, right? Who, who are we talking about, right? That's the thing, okay? So once you press the start quiz button, you'll see the question, but I think if you watch this video, you pay close attention, I don't think you should be surprised at all what the question is once you see it, okay? So let's go through some of the documents here uh, that we have. You have eight documents and it's a variety of, of writings. You got maps. You got paintings and illustrations. Uh, uh, I'm fully expecting you to review all of these sources in detail, okay? Now, what I often get is students, they often think this assignment is about writing a summary of the documents, okay? Please guys, this is your warning. This is not just about what a summary of what each document is. So let me explain, okay? What students typically do is that they will write about six paragraphs, right? Each paragraph is going to focus on one document. So they'll say something, they'll write something like this, like document number one is an account of the Aztecs, right? And uh, uh, what happens to them during the conquest by Hernan Cortez, right? They'll say something like that. And they'll say, well, in this document, you know, uh, uh, the Aztecs are talking about somewhat the violence that was inflicted upon them right, how they first met Hernan Cortez, and so and so. And then what they do is, paragraph number two, well, in document number two, we have a document by John Winthrop, it's a model of Christian charity, so and so. This document is about this, right, it's about the Puritans trying to set up this, this um, 
model city, uh, you know, this city upon a hill, right? This model Christian society, uh, it establishes somewhat the foundation of American freedom, American democracy, and American exceptionalism. And then they'll go to document number three. Guys, do not do that, right? What you need to do is, do I want a summary of the documents? I do, right? Just really short, but your task is to put the documents in its correct context and how it relates to the question. So at the end of the day, you are answering a question and you are writing an essay. An essay needs to have a thesis, an argument, supporting evidence, right? And an analysis and ultimately a conclusion. Think of the documents as your evidence, right? You're gonna use these documents to validate your answers towards the essay prompt. That's what it is, right? This is not just simply a, a document summary because guys, that is way too easy because I'll give you an example. If this was just about a document summary, right? If you click on the first document, guys, they have already provided you with a short summary, right? So it's not so much work that you have to do. Like it, it doesn't take much to provide me a, 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 a summary of the document because it's already provided for you. Right, so what I'm expecting you to do is to read this document and figure out what are the main themes in this document, what are the takeaways that you got from this document. So let's look at document number one. This is the Aztec accounts of the conquest, right? If you read this document, right, the summary goes, well, this is when Hernan Cortez came into contact with the Aztecs and in this document, um, it clearly teaches you what that first encounter was like, how the, the Aztec emperor, he kind of mistaken Hernan Cortes for a god, and ultimately Hernan Cortes somewhat exploits that, and then ultimately it's a sad story, right? We know what happens is that you have somewhat uh, um, Hernan Cortes, he exploits the local rivalries, he also has Malinche, which ultimately he uses as a translator to ultimately build this somewhat coalition to overthrow the Aztecs, and ultimately this is somewhat the beginning of the demise of the Aztecs, right? It's that simple. But the question becomes, is, well, how does this relate to the somewhat themes and, and the concept and the focus of midterm number one? Well, if you look at the Aztecs, would you say that they are the beneficiaries of colonization, of coming into contact with the Europeans, right? Or would you say that it's somewhat a misfortune for them? And I think the answer clearly lies in the fact that yeah they didn't benefit right that ultimately they are going to be somewhat conquer and 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 uh their population are going to be destroyed because of violence and warfare but also diseases right so that's how you should be using it guys right guys is that this document itself is my way of letting you know hey you should talk about what happened to the aztecs right in relate to ultimately this bigger somewhat concept of colonization and ultimately the transatlantic trade, right? Because it is the gold and the silver from the Aztec and from the Native Americans in central Mexico that will be the foundation, right? The currency that, that allows Europeans to ultimately to enrich themselves to buy goods, right? Um, so that's what you're paying attention to, right? Um, that, so that's in document number one right? Um, document number two, right? Let's pull up that text. And again, um, you have a short summary here, guys, right, of what the document is about, but you should still read it. And ultimately, I want you to take away the main themes that you get from these documents. And I think in this document, right, you have John Winthrop, who was the somewhat founder of, of the Puritan colony in Massachusetts, if you will, right? He comes to America. He has a mission, a, a sense from God that ultimately they're going to build their model Christian community, right? So if you read in this document, he explains to you what their goal is in America and what they are trying to achieve. And if you read this document, this is a very famous document in American history because it lays the foundation for the concept that we still hold today. It's called American exceptionalism, right? The idea that America is a unique place, is a guiding force for the rest of the world, the shining city upon a hill, as the title of the article somewhat reads, if you will, okay? So this document is my way of letting you know, hey, talk about the Puritans, talk about what they were trying to do, 
right? What they were trying to accomplish in the Americas. And would you say that the Puritans themselves, right, benefited from this transatlantic trade, if you will, right? That's ultimately what we're looking at, right, guys? So you have the documents to go through here, right? So you have the Aztecs, which in a larger sense, we're talking about Native Americans. You have John Winthrop, you know, that's, that's the Puritans, right? We're looking at the English colonists here, right? So you have other documents here, right? Um, document number three, um, this is somewhat um, my way of letting you know that you should analyze somewhat the, the societies that came about, right, in the Americas. Okay, so you have the destruction of Native American societies, but, right, others' misfortunes, right, are benefits for others, right? So if you look at somewhat uh, um, this primary resource here, it's looking at somewhat the rise of colonial churches, but I want you to look closely at this family right here, right? Look at what's in front of them, look at how they're dressed, right? Look at the stuff that they have, right? And, and ultimately, what is the foundation of all of this wealth, right? That ultimately, how are they able to afford all of this stuff, right? I think the answer is quite clear once you get through the sources, if you will. And if you look at the transatlantic map, right, and you follow the, the flow of goods and the flow of wealth, right, and the flow of labor, it is quite clear who is the beneficiary of this system and who are somewhat um, uh, suffering misfortunes from this system, if you will, okay? So you have a lot to somewhat um, to explore and examine, and ultimately, I want you to somewhat connect the dots. Who are the winners here and who are the losers, right? And how, how are they related, right? They're not separate, separate guys, right? The winners are winning. The winners are beneficiating, right? Um, uh, are beneficiaries, right, of the losers' misfortunes, right? And what are we talking about? It's those three continents, if you will, okay? So I want you to go through the resources, if you will, okay? And I want you to somewhat identify the participants, the, the players, the people, right, that we have been focusing on in the first six chapters of the read, right? You have Native Americans, okay? You have European colonists, okay? And then ultimately you have African slaves, okay? What's the connection? How are they all related? How are they all connected, right, in terms of this transatlantic trade and, and, the, and, and how are they impacted by colonization, right? Who's winning and who's losing, right? That's what it's about, guys, right? For midterm number one, okay? I think that once you go through the documents, it should be really easy for you to identify who are the winners and who are the losers. And ultimately, you're gonna write a cohesive essay to explain to me, right, uh, um, your answers. And then ultimately, use the documents, guys, to validate your answers, okay? So um, let's see, some documents that I, I would somewhat give you a little bit of tip. So if you look at document number five, um, this document is looking at the African slave trade in Africa itself. And the reason why I'm assigning this somewhat um, document, because um, it kind of challenges a, a misperception that we have of the slave trade. Right, so in this document, I want you to read very carefully at who is exactly participating, but who are the ones who are actually doing the kidnapping, right, and the enslaving of the slaves themselves in Africa, okay? It kind of addresses a misperception that we have today of what the slave trade was about. Okay, and then ultimately connect it to the transatlantic trade, if you will. Okay, so a little heads up about that. Um, let's see, document number six. Um, this is a, a map of the European empire boundaries, if you will, by 1763 and the, the French and Indian War. So if you look at this map, look at the markers of the Europeans' claims to the land, right? You have the British, which is the yellow shade. You have the French, 
they're somewhat gone. They're kind of in the Caribbeans, but you have the Spanish that kind of takes over part of the French uh, empire, if you will, right? But if you look at somewhat the North American continent, right? If you notice how the Europeans are just making claims to all of this land right here, but if you notice that there's somebody that's not somewhat um, uh, noted in the claims itself, that they're just carving up all this land for, for them to claim, if you will. But if you look at the names that are listed there, right? Right? Um, it has to do with Native Americans, right? That, that ultimately uh, their sovereignty is somewhat not respected, right? So something to think about as you're going along, right? So these are the documents. And I think, I think once you go through the documents, it'd be very clear in terms of, of, of how you will be able to put it together, right? To answer the question, uh, or at least to relate it to the themes that I want you to focus on. All right, so document number seven. So here I have a, a chart that breaks down the slave population through the 13 colonies, if you will. What I would suggest you do is try to identify which region or, or ultimately which sect, segment of the 13 colonies had the somewhat highest slave population. I think once you identify which region has the highest slave population, right, I think it'll be easier for you to connect the dot in terms of who holds the wealth, who holds the power, right, in colonial America, right? So if you think about it, the founding fathers, right, um, the first four presidents out, out uh, the first four out of five presidents in America, George Washington, uh, um, Thomas Jefferson, James Madison, uh, James Monroe even, right? That's four out of the first five president. John Adams, he's from Massachusetts, if you will, right? But if you look at the four out of five, first five presidents of America, they all come from one state, right? And that state itself had the largest uh, uh, slave population. It also had the largest population and it also had the highest political representation what, which means it also had a lot of influence in terms of colonial America. So it's not coincidence, guys, that the first four out of five presidents come from this colony or this state. So if you identify that, you will know somewhat the correlations, right? There is a link, right, as to why they hold so much power and why guys like Thomas Jefferson and George Washington were so powerful and also so wealthy. And part of that reason, let me see here, let me try to share with you another screen if I can, all right? And this is somewhat the themes that I want you to focus on, right? So what you are looking at here, right? So this is kind of a, an old house in colonial America in the 17th century. So this is like in the beginning phase, right? You're talking about like Jamestown, you know, the Puritans, right? And everything like that, right? If you look at it, it's kind of, you know, very basic, very rustic, if you will, very minimal, right? Basically, you have a log cabin. It's got somewhat uh, uh, the, the two chimney, a couple of windows, if you will. So you can see this very early on that the colonists themselves the English colonists in particular, right, didn't really have a lot of luxury, didn't really have a lot of somewhat fancy materials, right, because why? This is still very early on in the settlement, okay? So this is when they barely arrived in America. So I want to show you the next one, right? This might be inside their living room, if you will. Uh, um, you know, you can see the way that people dress. It's very basic, right? This is the, the, the living room, the parlor, as somewhat they call it. You can kind of see the roof, right? You can see the, the, um, the, the uh, somewhat the pillars going across, right? You, you can kind of see the skeleton of the house. So what I'm trying to show you here is this is the beginning of colonial America, right? Where you have these, these migrants, these colonists, they're coming over and they're kind of struggling to get their somewhat settlement off the ground. Fast forward to the 18th century, right? This is by the time of the American Revolution. It is quite clear that they are no longer, right, living in that primitive, that basic, right, that rustic, somewhat colonial house, right? What you see here, right, was your typical, what we call gentry or genteel culture, 
that was enjoyed by many of somewhat the, the property holders and many of the businessmen, part, particular those planters down in the South, right? If you look at it, they have ballrooms, right? They, they are wearing, look at the clothes that they are wearing, right? The material, the design, the color, right? Look at these rooms, these mansions, right? So what the rooms that you see here, this, these are actually just um, poker rooms. They're like playing card rooms. You would host like your friends over and everything like that, right? So, so I think you can see the progress, right? You can see the benefits of colonization, right? So I think you know that the winners are the English colonists, right? Guys like the founding fathers, Thomas Jefferson, George Washington. But I guess the question I want you to think about is what was the foundation of their wealth? How did they make their money? What is the credit, right, to allow them to accumulate all of this wealth and riches, if you will, right? I want you to think about that, right? Think of the land that, that they own. Where did that come from? Think about somewhat the people working on that land, right? Where did they come from? And ultimately making that connection, guys, right? That's what I want you to do for this exam, okay? So uh, let me go back here, okay? Okay, so that's why I want you to pay attention to, right, for midterm number one, okay? So you got all the documents to go through here. Uh, um, I want you to kind of put the pieces together. Think about the themes that I want you to address, right? Think about Adam Smith. Think about the conclusion that he came to about colonization. Think about the beneficiaries. Think about those who suffer from the misfortunes and ultimately connect the dots together, guys right? And I'm going to show you that map one more time. I'll share this map with you, right? Think about the flow of goods, right? The flow of currency, the flow of wealth, right? The flow of labor as well. They're all connected, right? Um, that's what I want you to do. So if you go down here, you got key terms here, right? Think of this as pieces, smaller pieces to the puzzle that is going to help you to tell a more comprehensive story. Right. In addition to the documents, right, use the key terms to help you tell a more comprehensive story. So if I want you to talk about Native Americans, try to figure out which of these key terms are related to Native Americans. Try to figure out which of these key terms are related to Africans. Right. Figure out which one of these key terms are related to the English colonists. Right. How do these key terms relate to that transatlantic slave trade? Right. Colonization. Adam Smith, that's something to think about. Okay, guys, right? So you got a lot of work to do here. I hope you set aside a lot of time in your schedule, right, to, to prepare for this assignment. And again, guys, this is not an easy task, okay? Um, you got eight documents, and at least six out of the eight documents need to be incorporated, you utilize effectively in your essay, right? I think that from the sample document, uh, um, question exams that you have reviewed, I think it's quite clear, right? And you can go back to your answers. You can go back to assignment and, and refresh your memory, if you will. If you remember, right, essay number one and two are pretty good, right? Uh, some of you disagree that maybe number two is better than one, right? We can disagree on that. But I think for the assignment, I just wanted you to understand that by far, right, essay number three was by far right? The worst essay out of the three. And that's what is important to me for you to identify in that essay, if you will, right? And if you notice the first two essays, right? Think about how they're using some of the documents, right? You don't see them just writing six paragraphs and saying, well, document one, one is about this, document two is about this, document three is about this. You don't see that, right? They are writing a essay. It has a thesis. It's using the documents, right, to answer the question, okay, but I'm making your job easier because I'm giving you, in addition to the documents ahead of time, I'm giving you the key terms as well, all right, so I'm already giving you a good start to this uh, uh, assignment, and I'm hoping for you to put the pieces together, right, write a cohesive essay that 
that addresses somewhat that theme of colonization, right? Who benefits, who loses out on it, right? Based on what Adam Smith kind of talks about in his somewhat writing, okay? And at the end of the day, connect the dots, right? In terms of the transatlantic trade, how does somewhat certain societies emerge as somewhat wealthy with power while other societies are somewhat um, on the verge of extinction, if some people want to call it that, if you will. I don't, I wouldn't go that far, right? But you got winners and losers here, but I want you to think about how they are related, right? What is the credit? Why are the winners successful? And why are the losers, right? suffering from misfortunes. That's what I want you to do. All right, guys. So just a heads up for every article, for every document that you don't use effectively, right? In your essay, it is a negative, right? Of 20 points from your essay. Okay. So you want to make sure I, I know two hours is, may seem like it's not a lot of time. Not if you do your preparation. Two hours is quite a lot of time because technically, if you remember the sample DBQ that you did, those students only had 75 minutes, an hour and 15 minutes. They didn't even know the documents that they were going to be using. They had no key terms, right? It was all on the top of their heads, right? And it was a comprehensive test. Whereas you, you get to have the documents ahead of time, right? I'm letting you know what you can use. I'm letting you know the key terms. I'm even letting you know what themes and, and ideas to focus upon. So at the end of the day, I don't think it's too much of me to expect you to write a cohesive essay, right? To put all the pieces together and to write it in a manner that is somewhat at a college level. At the end of the day, guys, this is a college course, right? So it's 20 points for every uh, uh, um, document that you don't use. And in addition, for every key term that you don't use in your essay, it's a negative three points. It's not either or, it's actually both, right? So, so um, that's kind of how I grade, right, um, in a sense. So you wanna make sure you use six documents at least and you use all of the key terms, right? Um, so with that said, guys, if you need more help, I got tutorial videos um, down here uh, based on the Khan Academy. They kind of talk to you about another example, another tutorial of a sample DB, DB, DBQ that they will be using. If you need help on, in terms of how to quote and cite resources, it is also available down here. Uh, I am also available for help, guys, so if you need me, please do not hesitate to reach out to me, but you got work to do, but I think you got plenty of time to prepare. And if, I, if, if you put in the time to, to prepare and you're paying attention in this video to the themes that I have addressed, I think you're gonna be somewhat, um, you're gonna be fine, you're gonna be excellent. All right, guys? Um, so last word, um, when you're taking the test, um, just, I know this seems kind of obvious, but, you want to have strong internet connection, that's number one, and you don't want to have anything distracting you. You wanna take the test in a nice, quiet, calm place. Because why? Once you start the quiz, okay, um, the clocks tick, you have two hours, and there's no redo, guys, right? This is a little different from the quiz. You don't get a second chance, okay? So you wanna utilize all your time, two hours. Um, what I also recommend is in the first 10 minutes or so, I recommend you read the question very carefully and you start outlining, do a quick outline, right? It's kind of like a roadmap to allow you to let you know what you're going to be writing about, right? Uh, I think it's just easier. It gives you an overview of somewhat your essay itself. It's kind of like the skeleton of your essay and it will help you along the way, right? You, want, you don't want to just do everything off of the top of your brain and everything like that because, you know, with the clock ticking, um, it could put you under a lot of stress. So you want to utilize your time, be efficient. So the first five, 10 minutes, make sure you do the outline, okay, guys? But I am available for help, guys. If you want to shoot me someone an email, you want to message me, or you want to set up a video conference, feel free, I'm available but you got some work to do. So guys, best of luck, all right? Thank you.